Hi everyone, welcome to the Robert Show. We are here at AWS Suite in Van, and look who's back on the Robert yes. Show. It's Michael Fuslow. Michael, glad to be back. Glad uh, to be back, man. This was long due. <laughs> I think we spoke almost eight months back, and we're back now. About that. About that. Yep. Yes, I'm excited to chat about various things around. You know, because we're here at AWS Suite in Van, I'm yep. kind of curious to know a little bit about AWS, the partnership. How are you kind of seeing? You know, the resorts piece coming together. I was yep. I was yep. at. Shift New York a few weeks back. Yep. I saw some interesting announcements. I didn't see you there. I was. All right, a little bit. I saw you for a little bit. All right. Uh, so tell me about uh, first of all what's new that's happening, and then we'll get into various topics. Yeah, tons of new stuff. So yep. um, you know, I know you mentioned ResOps, but I'm going to go with Unity first, right? Yes. Unity really the uh, culmination of data security, yep. cyber recovery, and identity resilience. Yep. You know, all coming together, and it's really important that. You know, we're doing that across all the different data silos, on-prem, cloud, and everywhere in between, even at the edge. So really important that these things are coming together because, you know, as these AI workloads are really proliferating out there, right. it's, um, you know, certainly a challenge. And there's a lot of catching up that people are trying to do, and this is certainly going to help them do it. Yes, you, do, you spoke about AI workloads. When you look at AI workloads on AWS today, where do you see resilience breaking first? Can you share a little bit about that? Yeah, I would say it's probably not the workloads. It's more about how people are deploying the workloads. So True. single True. AZ, I would say, is a pretty big deal. Uh, things that are certainly running on, you know, a single control plane, like when we saw the outage and a lot of different things went down or, you know, overly relying on certain technologies that run in a consolidated way, like uh, auto scaling. Um, so that's probably where I would probably focus my resiliency efforts on you know, certainly those two conditions specifically. Love it. Uh, let's also talk a little bit about ResOps, right? I've been, you know, obviously uh, seeing all the announcements around ResOps. Yep, uh, yep. So tell me a little bit about uh, what's uh, happening in the ResOps world, but sure. uh, also tell me a little bit about, uh, you know, how an AWS customer yep. can make the most of it. Yeah, so I would say ResOps is, a, is, is not something you buy, right? It's a, it's a discipline. And it's a set of practices that you certainly want to institute. And that's not going to augment any of the other existing ops, like DevOps or anything else like that. Uh, but it, you know, it's really focusing on pretty much the essence of what we have with Unity, right? Bringing those worlds together, making sure people are resilient across their workloads and people and processes. So you know, this is that, that composite of all of these things kind of coming together. And it's making sure that people can actually survive failures and do it extremely fast and do it in a granular way so they can quickly recover. Yeah. So that's pretty much the essence of what ResOps is and that's what we bring into you know, the landscape. I love it, I love it and uh, thanks for sharing that. Uh, I'm kind of also wanting, since obviously we are at AWS, I would want to you know, obviously have topics around that. Uh, as AI spreads across S3, DynamoDB, and Iceberg Data Lakes, uh, what design rules uh, should architects follow to make recovery you know, easier and not harder? What would be yeah. your thoughts? Yep. So, I would say design for failure, right? And I know that's like a, a pretty Amazonian <laughs> thing, but that's certainly still the case. Um, you know, when we think about even well-architected and the reliability pillar, you know, even with ResOps and the things that we're doing, that stuff doesn't go away, so it very much augments that stuff. And then, you know, really thinking about granular recovery. A lot of times when we talk about Iceberg and some of the other things that we're having and that we're presenting at the show, people don't actually think that they can actually recover down to those really granular levels. So moving away from snapshots and, and strips and uh, strips and moving toward you know granular recovery because now these are options that people can harness and quickly recover their environments. Yeah, no, I love it. I love these insights. So uh, I'm kind of also wanting to talk a little bit about next year. 2026 is just around the corner. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about what is the most important AI-driven resiliency capability you are building into the Commvault portfolio for AWS. Yeah and for otherwise as well, the community. Yeah, so I'll give you two answers because I probably have a new answer now that I saw the keynote this morning. <laughs> so like the Commvault answer would be obviously we're doubling down on bringing AI powered cyber resilience to our platform. Right. So capabilities like we have with, um, with S3, with Dynamo, with yep. Iceberg, obviously yep. those are good examples. Uh, in addition to that, you know, really doubling down on even our partnerships that we have, even with Amazon, and some of the other partners to make sure that we have all the security capabilities to bring that next generation resiliency. Then, for my this morning converse, uh, my my this morning answer, I would absolutely say, you know, looking at these frontier agents is going to absolutely change the game for how people are doing security. And that security okay. agent thing was so damn cool. I can't wait to you know have a test run of that. And I think those are the types of innovations that 
you know, other ISVs like ourselves and even competitors and some of our partners are going to start to harness to really simplify and bring next generation resiliency to their landscape. I love it. Uh, this is excellent. Uh, one last question. I promise this is the last one. <laughs> Michael, uh, if people and you know, I'll, I'll talk about leaders. Uh, if you have to give one advice around resops, around you know, obviously cyber resiliency, and also around you know, obviously AWS uh, and using it with Commvault, right? Yep. What would that be? Yeah, I would say, look, there's two things, right? Uh, cyber resiliency takes a village, right? Right, and it and it's not just the backup admin. It's not just the security team. It may not be just even AWS or some of the data silos and other things that you have in the environment. So it's really good to be an advocate internally and build that up and challenge ISVs and your partners to do better. Right. And then the other part is kind of what I mentioned before. There are better ways to do this and people should be trying to simplify. So if that means consolidate on a single platform like ours to really have that you know, resiliency across the board makes a lot of sense and that's what they should be harnessing. That's awesome. Uh, Michael, always uh, you shared some amazing insights Appreciate and thanks that. for doing this. Uh, Anytime. One last question. Uh, <laughs> if people want to follow you, this is my third time, one last question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if yeah. people want to follow you, which is the best platform yep. to do that. Absolutely LinkedIn. LinkedIn? Absolutely LinkedIn. Okay, um, nice. You know, I'm all over LinkedIn. Uh, I always encourage whether I'm presenting at events <laughs> or I'm here on the Rabbit Show. Um, absolutely connect with me on LinkedIn and like I said, Challenge us. Bring your hard problems to us so that we can solve. We love solving really hard challenges. So I appreciate you having me. Love it. Uh, always such a pleasure to love have it, you on the Rabbit Show. Likewise. We'll keep the conversation going. Next year, I'll me maybe be calling you uh, ambassador for the Rabbit Show. Let's, let's not wait till next year. Let's do it sometime <laughs> soon. Appreciate we'll be, it. You'll be hearing more from Michael very soon. But Michael, once again, thanks for doing this. Thanks we'll for keep the me. conversation going. Thank love you. It. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today.